Hello, everyone. Welcome to V Class today. I'm your host Howard Chen, and it is my honor to have our digital minister Audrey Tang to be with me. Please say hello to the camera. Hello, good local time, everyone. All right. So it's my great pleasure to have. Digital Minister Audrey Tang to be with me to have this all English interview, and we will have the sub subtitles here for you. So don't worry about our English, and it's a great time for us to learn English and also learn about digital democracy. Right. So shall we begin? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Sure. Welcome. Let's start from our first question. So let's start from what you have been pushing forward. That is the three main topics that you have. That is digital democracy. Under that, we have open government, use engagement, and also social innovation.、Mm -hmm. Right. Of course, we have the red definitions readily available online. But would you please explain them or elaborate them to to us in your own words and give us some examples about the three topics?、Mm -hmm. Certainly. So, open government is fundamentally about trustworthiness.、Yes. It's about、uh, trusting the people, and making sure that people can see the ideas being brainstormed by public officials. So, the transparency on one side and participation, which is the other side,、uh, are the first core pillars in open government. We add to that the two ideas of accountability. Uh, meaning that we need to give an account,、uh, whether we include some people's idea or not. We have to explain that. So one example would be、uh, on the daily central epidemic command center press conference, where、uh, the commander Chen Shizhong used to every 2 p.m. give an account of the ideas we received the previous day through hotlines such as 1922,、uh, and then whether it's pink medical masks or rainbow medical masks or whatever <laughs>、uh, new ideas that we get from the community, we make. Make sure that we amplify it and give an account of how that's going to integrate with our counter coronavirus plan. So that's accountability,、yes. and there's also inclusion,、mm -hmm. um, because not all people are very comfortable using digital channels to express their、uh, ideas or、mm -hmm. suggestions. So there needs to be people who are trusted intermediaries, such as the community pharmacists. Uh, who are already trusted by the local neighborhood,、yes. and、uh, elderly people already go there to refill their chronic prescriptions anyway.、Um, and so, for like wearing a mask to protect oneself against one's own unwashed hands, that idea,、um, if it's the pharmacist doing the convincing, then when the elderly have some innovations or some questions and things like that, they can channel it through the professionalism. The pharmacy, so that's called inclusion.、Mm -hmm. So transparency, participation, accountability, and inclusion—that forms the basis of open government. Yes,、well, that's wonderful for your、mm -hmm. explanation and definition for open government.、Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a few key words here. For example, transparency,、mm -hmm. accountability,、mm -hmm. and also inclusion、mm -hmm. and trust.、Mm -hmm. I'm especially in curious about how the trust. Is formed in public、mm -hmm. because we know that for a policy to be trusted or to be carried out successfully,、mm -hmm. it requires a lot of trust of the people.、Mm -hmm. So, for example, open data is trust,、mm -hmm. and also we have a lot of systems that require trust of the、mm -hmm. people.、Mm -hmm. So, for especially for our pandemic and the government's response,、mm -hmm. it requires a lot of trust.、Mm -hmm. And in your view, how、mm -hmm. is it formed? How do、mm -hmm. people? Know that they can really trust the government.、Mm -hmm. Is transparency enough?、Mm -hmm. Yeah, as、uh, Lao Tzu said in Tao Te Ching,、uh, to give no trust is to get no trust. That means to me that the government need to trust the citizens,、yes. and then the citizens may or may not trust back.、Mm -hmm. So trusting the citizens,、uh, what does it mean? For example, when we're rationing out the medical masks in the pharmacies.、Yeah. If we decide to publish only open data as data every day,、yeah. um, so people will have to basically believe, have faith in the national health insurance agency's accountability mechanism. But there is no way to audit that in a participatory fashion. On the other hand, we decided early February to publish every thirty seconds, and that changed the dynamic、mm. because when you're queuing in line, when you see the person queuing before you, swipe there. Uh, IC card. Then you can check your phone on the map or on the line chat bot and so on, and actually see that the mask availability in that particular pharmacy decreased by two. 
uh, because at the beginning it's two every week. Uh, and so if you see it rather increased by two, you'll probably call 1922 right there. <laughs> and so <laughs> auditing by participation, I think that really shows the trustworthiness, not only of the pharmacy, but of the entire system. I see. That's why that's where participation comes into play, right? That's right. So we don't just give people the data and mm -hmm. say that you can take a look, mm -hmm. but you also require their participation mm -hmm. so that's they right. are part of it. That's right. And if the quality uh, of the data needs improvement, for example, uh, early February, there were pharmacies that are handing out those take number plates. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they do that and collect the national health insurance card uh, and then send the card back with the mask uh, to people coming back with those take number of plates, uh, that actually uh, renders the mask availability map useless because you will see that it still have a lot of masks, but actually the take number system has already run out. So these are two social innovations, mask availability map on one side and take number system on the other, but they kind of uh, run bump into each other and cancel each other out. Uh, and so at that point, uh, the important thing to do is to always trust the citizens and trust the pharmacist. And we say, sorry, uh, we caused you trouble, uh, but we will change it the very next week, next Thursday, to make sure that there is two different data fields in the um, open data, making sure that the opening hour is divided into handing out the numbers and uh, handing out actually the masks. And then later on, when pharmacists requested that they want to press a button and disappear from the map, as soon as the ticket number system runs out of the number cards, um, we implemented that also on the following Thursday. And so basically owing up uh, to whatever errors we, we made and also showing competence that we can give an account of how to fix that the very next Thursday, that also earns trustworthiness for everyone. I see. So that is, to me, a very open attitude mm -hmm. to show the public that the government is trustworthy mm -hmm. because it's a dynamic process and the government mm -hmm. is keeping improving itself. That's right. That's wonderful. Now, please allow me to take a look at my notes okay. <laughs> for the next question. Um, right. So we've finished two questions mm -hmm. and... Um, Not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're moving on to COVID-19 related mm -hmm. question. Actually, we've talked about some of them, mm -hmm. right? So trust and ah, the highlights mm -hmm. for digital policy. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay。刚才听起来如何？可以哦。大家没有觉得语速太快或太慢？还是你们你们还没放弃吧？对，因为学习者也可以自己调整播放的速度，我会提醒大家。嗯，五一号，OK。好，准备喽。好。Well, Minister, uh, what do you think can be seen as the highlights of our COVID-19 response policies, especially digital policies implemented? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in addition to the mask rationing and availability map system uh, that we just talked about, um, I think another key measure is really the quarantine system. Yeah. In our quarantine system, uh, you're asked to go to the quarantine hotel for 14 days yeah. where you're physically far from leaving, but receive a stipend of around 33 US dollars per day. Uh, but if you break out of that quarantine, of course, it's 1,000 times that as a fine. Uh, or if you live uh, in a place with your own bathroom and so on, you can also choose digital quarantine, mm -hmm. uh, in which case your phone is put into the digital fence uh, and and the triangulation uh, done by the signal strength in nearby cell phone towers is used to monitor the whereabouts of the phone in a 
um, situation, much like the advanced earthquake warnings, flood warnings, and things like that. People understand that this travels through SMS, and it only uses the cell phone signal, not uh, Wi-Fi or GPS or Bluetooth or 5G or 4G or any, anything like that. So if you turn off uh, all those, you know, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it still works, right? Mm. Um, and so it is quite inclusive in that it doesn't mandate the installation of any particular operating system or any particular app, and it is um, privacy preserving in a sense that it only knows your general whereabout, like 50 meter radius, but not which room you're in. Um, and mm. also people understand that it's a telecom doing the SMS sensing, so they will not hand that uh, information to third party processors that want to sort of advertisements or something like that. So that is a pretty good system. And we did implement the quarantine system in addition to the mask use, and that has kept the R value to be under one, meaning that there's no community spread uh, in Taiwan. Wow. So I think, in my view, that is the considerate use of technology. Mm -hmm. That is to strike a balance between mm -hmm. the surveillance mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. also the uh, pervasiveness of mm -hmm. technology That's and right. personal privacy. That That's is wonderful. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Moving on, we'd like to talk about how to take Taiwan to the world. Mm -hmm. And as we have already witnessed, mm -hmm. a lot of great achievements done by Taiwan and also by you. Mm -hmm. That is to talk to international media outlets, mm -hmm. to talk to them. And my first question in this regard is mm -hmm. how do you prepare? Because for a lot of presentations, we know there are a lot of preparations required. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm, I'm sure you have to look at a lot of information and materials mm -hmm. every day. That's right. And especially when you're preparing for an interview or a mm -hmm. presentation, how do you usually prepare mm -hmm. for these public mm -hmm. presentations mm -hmm. when you need to communicate to mm -hmm. so many different people? Yeah. Usually I just read the materials by day, and especially right before I go to sleep. Uh, but I do not make any edits, or nor do I make any judgments on the material. I simply scan them uh, into my visual memory, and then I go to sleep. Uh, if I sleep for eight hours or more, uh, then I wake up usually with a pretty good uh, outline of the structure of the key ideas in those materials and how they connect. So that's how I woke up a day and uh, found my um, like eyes open and then fast, fair, fun. <laughs> I just imprinted Keywords. on my on my visual <laughs> uh, visual field, <laughs> and I just uh, you know opened Keynote and started typing in fast, fair, fun. Uh, but th those were of course the key ideas in the materials, maybe hundreds of pages uh, that I have absorbed in the previous night. And do you have some tricks or mm -hmm. special tools you use that you mm -hmm. care to share with us in terms of preparation for? Mm -hmm. A uh, big amount of material or mm -hmm. big amount of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, I usually think with a stylus. So all my uh, computing devices. This is an iPad, uh, but also uh, my phone, which is a Note. Uh, all use stylus, and this mm -hmm. has been like that since I don't know Palm Pilot, which was ages ago, <laughs> <laughs> and Sharp <Shams> Solaris, <laughs> things like that. So um, because when I write with a stylus, uh, my mind mapping flows to uh, two dimensions or more, and I can zoom in and zoom out, and that shows the interconnectedness of the, all the ideas. On the other hand, if I'm forced to uh, type, then I have to essentially serialize, that is to say, to make them flow in a linear fashion. But that is uh, quite arbitrary in many of the uh, materials that I read, read. There's more than one way to connect them, more than one, than one way to organize them. So mind mapping to me is really important. Now, I, on iPad, I use good notes uh, to mind map. So in other words, taking notes mm -hmm. can help you generalize or mm -hmm. forming a database Mm -hmm. for the materials that you have absorbed. Is that's that right, true? that's right. And my handwriting, uh, while like even I myself, uh, after a day or two, didn't recognize what I wrote, uh, the computer actually knows what I wrote quite well. <laughs> so the um, OCR, the character recognition, that also helps a lot. So you can say you're not a fan of traditional note-taking with the paper mm -hmm. book? Yeah, if anything doesn't have full text search, uh, it's broken to me because I rely on full text search to organize my thoughts. I see. Yeah. All right. Oh, I need to take a look at my friend else okay. again. <laughs> it's oh, the uh, low tech part. No, that's right, not, not full text search. <laughs> You're just serially reading it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mm. I kind of combined the two questions. That's right. Yeah, number four and number five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe uh, later I'll ask you if you have mm -hmm. a final sprints before presentation. Mm -hmm. sure. That's the last of number five, and then we'll move on to All right. the next page. Mm -hmm. and the next question will be more about language and cultures. Mm -hmm. right. So I think it's also related to taking Taiwan to the world because mm -hmm. yeah. Taiwan should still is not fully included. Yeah. Right, okay. so we need to introduce our languages and cultures to mm -hmm. the world. All right. Okay. Ready. Mei Tang Hao. Gao Mei Chuan Bao. Hao. 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 Right, a uh, rather personal and also interesting question to ask you. Like for me, I do have to have a final sprint before a big presentation. Do you have that? Do you have to review all the materials you have before a big presentation? Um, I do, but it's mostly in my head. So I usually just take a few deep breaths. Um, it takes anywhere from five seconds to 20 seconds and just run very quickly through uh, those presentation slides and so on uh, in my visual field. And, and that's all the preparation I need. Does it have to be a very quiet time for you to be alone? Or uh, you can do it? Not uh, necessarily. If I can close my eyes for like five minutes. That's, that's good, yeah. As long as you can uh -huh. go into your own world. That's right. Prepare for it. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But All virtual right. reality helps. <laughs> because when you're wearing VR, people know that you're not in a do not disturb one mode. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way to communicate. That's right. It's like wearing a really big earphone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Headphone, and, I mean. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next question about taking Taiwan to the world. Sometimes we do need to introduce our languages mm -hmm. and cultures to mm -hmm. people from a different country or mm -hmm. totally different cultural background. Mm -hmm. And I once actually experienced that when I was interpreting you mm -hmm. to some uh, experts from the MIT, mm -hmm. you were quoting Lao Tzu. That's right. Right. But you were so considerate, mm -hmm. you used English in that mm -hmm. session. So mm -hmm. what I and my booth mate needed mm -hmm. to do was only to find mm -hmm. the original text in Chinese yeah. and read it out to the Chinese audience. Yeah, so, I, I even specified the chapter number yes, to make your life easier. Yes, <laughs> that's so considerate. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Right. So uh, my question here is, mm -hmm. how do you introduce our languages and cultures to other people? Mm -hmm. I mean, in a way that is easy to understand mm -hmm. and also not too complicated. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when we give introduction, when it's too complicated, people mm -hmm. lose interest in it. That's right. Um, so first of all, I would look up the work that previous translators did on the same field. So, for example, when I was quoting Dao De Jing on yes. that particular occasion, uh, I quoted the Ursula Le Guin uh, version, uh, which says, nature doesn't make long speeches. Uh, and that's a very beautiful like crystallization of the four very simple uh, kanji uh, characters. Right? Yes, yeah. That's right. Right. So so it's a like equally beautiful and elegant rendering of the core idea without going into the hermeneutics. That is to say, the the getting the four characters uh, fully expanded. So a a poetic rendition. I think it's important, and one can practice that actually just by translating more. Uh, and as a translator, and okay, <laughs> Mounty, Mounty. we were talking about <coughs> translation and interpretation. So, I can answer it. I can answer it. I can answer it. I and as a translator and uh, occasional interpreter, I think what really makes sense is to practice that kind of subconsciously. Whenever you run into an interesting idea in your own culture, try to translate that in English mm -hmm. on the background of one's mind. Mm -hmm. And that's how, uh, for example, how um, the workplace 
are, are made. Because some word plays uh, makes a lot of sense in one language, simply does not translate. So you have to come up with equivalent wordplay. But if you do that um, like on the spot, nobody can do that. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes more sense to just uh, pre-compute some of those word plays and just cache it uh, in one's mind so that when the situation calls for it, uh, like when somebody want to ask me, uh, okay, what's the official name of your state, of your country? I can go like, yeah, it's the Transcultural Republic of Citizens. Yeah. I see. So in your view, or from my observation, I think preparation actually is ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. It's not just a one-time thing before a presentation, and they're mm -hmm. accumulative, right? That's right, that's right. When you laugh about a, a meme in Mandarin, and you can subconsciously then ask oneself, well, what, what would you do if you have to translate that to English? And sometimes there's no translation, there's just a rendition, yeah. but then uh, keeping that in mind helps a lot. Yes, especially, yeah. it's so relatable to me, especially when there is a pun, and mm -hmm. the punchline is in mm -hmm. the language itself, mm -hmm. That's usually untranslatable, mm -hmm. right? That's right? And in your view, I think to me, your view to lang your approaches to languages and cultures to me mm -hmm. sounds like um, open source or mm -hmm. open data, right. mm -hmm. because you have to be aware of where the resources are, mm -hmm. and also you are constantly checking what's new, what's the updates, and when you need them, you consult them. So it's not a one-time thing. Right? Mm -hmm. That's very good tips for our learners here. Definitely. Thank you very much. Right, no time. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was English learning. Just in song again. Yeah, I was just thinking, we should talk about the things we talked about. Yeah, 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 好，我看一下。这样，对我主要是想让，因为因为委员的程度实在是很高，嗯、就是跟大众英文学者来说、嗯，那我想让大家有一个跟您的连接，就是把您带到您还在比较 beginner level 的时候，嗯、所以可以回顾一些当时也许挫折或者是比较觉得有困难的地方，嗯、那分享一些小故事，嗯、大家会觉得哦，自己可以从哪些切点去了解跟进步。好 ，OK， anecdotes。Motivation. Okay, English learning today. Oh, hello, hello. Hello. Now I would like us to talk about your English learning journey. Right. So, can we take the time machine now and back to the time when you were still a beginner for learning the English language? English language. Do you still remember that time? And do you yes, have yeah. some? Yeah, you still mm -hmm. do. And there are, might be some awkward experience or memories about mm -hmm. using the language and maybe making the scene of yourself without knowing, right? Mm -hmm. It happens to it can happen to every one of us when we're mm -hmm. learning a foreign language. Right? Right. So would you share mm -hmm. with us some of mm -hmm. that awkward moments back mm -hmm. then? Sure. Um, so I first learned English purely as a written language. Like I, I don't have a community to speak to mm. when I was eight years old, when I was first learning programming. So I would, um, as a beginner of programming, uh, I don't even have a personal computer at the beginning. So I have this A4 paper that I use a pencil uh, to draw the computer's uh, responses on the upper side uh, and then use a pen to draw the like QWERTY uh, keyboards. <laughs> right? so, so while I do know how to pronounce uh, individual alphabets, I, I don't have a pronunciation for most of the words. So I would just uh, wake up and then uh, write or rather um, type uh, CLS, enter, and then use an eraser to, to erase the upper side. Uh, but I, I didn't know at the time that CLS actually stands for clear screen. Mm. Um, and so I, I thought CLS is a, is a word. Uh, so you, you memorize it as CLS. Right, right, right. And, and I don't even know how to pronounce it because there's no vowel uh, in, the, right. in the sound, right? So, so for, for the longest time, I thought that is <laughs> it's, it's a word in English. There's <laughs> a sound in our own mind right, to help right. us memorize it. That's things. right, that's right. Because
because the, the other keywords in the language, in the basic language, they are pronounceable. Um, you can say print, hello yeah. world, you can say randomized timer and things like that. But, but, uh, but, but the word clips uh, really <laughs> evaded me for the longest time, uh, eluded me. Uh, but uh, of course, later on, I, I would learn that it actually stands for um, cl clearing up the screen. Mm. But that's not until I was like 14 years old or something. Mm. Yeah. Right. Wow. Mm. But you actually didn't say it to anyone, uh -huh. so it was fine, I think. Yeah, well, of course, <laughs> it's, it's less embarrassing if you're just uh, putting it in writing, I guess. Right on. Right. Mm -hmm. Then about motivation. Mm -hmm. That is a key question for many people, because when people are motivated, they keep learning and they mm -hmm. keep propelling sure. themselves to move on and to mm -hmm. keep learning more. Sure. So what was your mm -hmm. motivation? What was the motivation for you to keep learning English? Mm -hmm. Well, initially, it's purely instrumental, like um, quite literally, not figuratively. Uh, if I know more about the basic language, then I can play the instrument that's the personal computer better, because eventually I had a personal computer. And then that would save my time, because I don't like doing calculations by hand, but I was very interested in mathematics, but not in the math part of it. Uh, and so <laughs> the, the more I learn about the computer programming languages, the more the computer can automate away those chores uh, to me and then I can learn more mathematics so that's my initial motivation I see that is to use a tool better mm -hmm. exactly. so you, you learn another tool even mm -hmm. better that's okay. just the English language thank you for that and now do you still see yourself consider yourself an English language learner yeah, definitely I make mistakes all the time and because I learn English with no uh, community to practice the spoken part of the English language. I tend to pick up the accent of whomever I'm talking to, uh, but I may make a lot of mistakes when it comes to the pronunciation. All right. Do you have some special learning methods that you can share with us? Mm -hmm. Well, it's about listening to rap, I guess, and trying to catch up. Uh, to the rappers. I know your favorite is Hamilton. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, listening to, to Hamilton, uh, both the uh, original soundtrack and later on on Disney Plus, uh, that, that's really educational for me. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for sharing with us your mm -hmm. learning journey and English learning tips. Cool. All right. Now it's note time again. Okay. The last part, I think. Yeah. So, behind the scenes. <笑>好的你很順對都沒有沒有什麼東西嗯一次啊還好對很有效率最後就是比較輕鬆的舒壓還有最後一題我不知道有沒有其他方法有沒有問過都是如果不從最後一次做什麼那當然是變成這個<
<laughs> That's a very good tip. Take a nap. <laughs> uh, it's a, like with sleep with a purpose. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Purposeful sleep. That's very productive. That's right. Right. And now, uh, what would you do if you were not in politics? Probably a translator, and interpreter, and also a YouTuber. <laughs> Any particular reason for that? I know mm -hmm. you, you, you actually have an interest in translation That's because right. you are in love with learning mm -hmm. about different cultures mm -hmm. and different languages. So it mm -hmm. makes sense to me and maybe to mm -hmm. the audience. Mm -hmm. But what about the other different things mm -hmm. that you might want to do? Yeah, um, so I do have uh, the channel, the PDIS channel at digitalminister.tw that uh, this recording also has a copy uh, in, right? Uh, and it's in the Creative Commons, meaning that it's uh, open innovation. Anyone can take clips or samples from this particular rendition and make, I don't know, rap songs like the band uh, Dos Monos from Japan actually did that. They just took a random interview uh, where I talk in English and yeah. then they, they sample that into their Japanese uh, rap song. So I think uh, just contributing to this creative community is something that I really enjoy. And so in a sense, I'm also a YouTuber, except uh, just with a you know public purpose, <laughs> but uh, funded by all the taxpayers. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and, and making sure that not only the what of policies, but the why and the how of policy making is clearly explained uh, to everyone who cares to watch. Right. That totally makes sense to me, mm -hmm. especially when I am interpreting some conferences, mm -hmm. I see your video remarks. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you're a streamer. That's right. You're doing pre-recorded programs exactly. to send out to everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. that is wonderful. Cool. And that concludes our all English interview today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Audrey yeah, Tang. Thank you for the great questions. No, yeah. no problem. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. It's my honor. And mm -hmm. let's say goodbye to everyone. Live long and prosper. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. I roll. Guilty Pleasure 我是觉得说 guilty pleasure 讲罪好像有一点太沉重对我们这边想到罪就是想到刑法那种东西对有一种公共性那好像是说会有妨害到别人但是 不错小坏坏的缺心我觉得坏缺心还蛮好的<笑> <Okay。笑> 就是我会在网络上面去找说特别去针对特别是我个人去做那种比较是尖酸刻薄的攻击的人然后呢去加他好友然后去传一个讯息给他然后去说这个你所问的这个其实不是这样子啊我二零一四年就已经在行政院工作
很我觉得很不容易，因为他其实需要一定的勇气，是，而且对方通常反而会更惊讶，因为你比他更勇敢。对对对，就像是说，这个你在跟别人 complain 我，然后我突然间从旁边走过去，就正面的跟他说，<笑>对对对对哦，其实他其实你的想法是错的，对对,对，其实事实是如何如何。对对对，那就是说，这里面也不一定是他的想法是对或错，有的时候只是说，我好像拼拼图一样嘛，把我这边看起来这一块拼进去。那如果他觉得说，哎，但是在这个事实基础上，有什么可以加强的？我是虚心聆听，我不是只是走过然后丢一句话，而是说是澄清，对，而是说他有什么具体的建议的话，那我也非常愿。你来进一步回答，了解，等于是让观点更加多元，嗯、我们可以这样说吗、啊？让大家看到的面向其实不是那么的单一。没错，哦，哇，这个我觉得这个话确性好高级哦，<笑>真的是谢谢委员分享、嗯。那第二个好奇的点是，也许有点个人，所以看委员怎么想。就是您上一次哭是什么时候？好像是有一次切洋葱。好失望啊！因为没有戴眼罩，所以委员会会做菜吗？会啊，会做菜。是喜欢做菜吗？还蛮喜欢，但是疫情呃的时候没有，真的完全没有时间做。哦，是因为疫情真的是让太多公众事务又涌上台面，对对对对，协调。主要是疫情比较缓解之后，大概四月左右，我就是一醒来，大概凌晨可能六点。左右就要开始准备起点，跟特别是美东那边的很多会议啊，或者采访、嗯。那到傍晚的时候，又是非洲跟欧洲嘛，对，那所以等于就是说，整天大概会跟四五个不同时区的朋友互动。那所以以前还是比较朝九晚五，那现在就是朝七晚七，晚七还不一定下得了班。嗯，哇。那就变成说，要更是要找到好的一个刚刚讲坏确信。对对对，所以像这种就是跑去私讯别人这一种，<笑>就比较省时间。哦，的确，而且是随时随地，比较没有时空限制，抓个五分钟就可以了。嗯，的确。那第三个我们好奇的是说，委、嗯、员有没有不擅长的事情，嗯、或者是比较？做起来不那么拿手的事，因为我们常常都觉得说，哇，你好像用脑波就可以处理非常多事情。嗯、对我，我其实从小因为身体不好，所以我其实整个呃，就是 outdoor activity， 就是出门去做的任何事情，不管是爬山啊、潜水啊、嗯、跑步啊什么、嗯，都非常的不擅长。对，那后来当然是多多少少有开始练一些回来，但是基本上只要心跳快到一个程度，我脑里就会警铃大作，说，哎，那你是不是要昏倒了之类？那但事实上没有嘛，因为我心脏开过刀已经好了，但是现在还是。比较偏好比较稳静的活动、嗯，那主要原因就是因为这些大肌肉的活动，我真的呃就是在脑里面只一直会有一个，哎、欸，那我是不是马上要昏倒？但其实没有的那种感觉。嗯，了解。哇，那切洋葱听起来就是一个蛮静态，没错没错，非常<笑>非常对，<笑>还可以活动类型，对对对对对对对，可以活动类型的，有一些情绪的释放跟变化，只要大概两平到三平的空间就可以做的很好的活动。很适合大家隔离的时候参考。没错，没错。那最后是因为我们还是回到是一个英文学习，鼓励大家学习的平台，也想要请委员用这个机会，也许我们先跟日本的粉丝朋友鼓励一下您学英文的一些想法，或者对他们说说的话，然后最后再跟台湾的朋友讲。嗯，因为我们知道您在日本其实有许多的粉丝，那也许现在用英文可以跟他们简单的说几句话。好 ，Hello, I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister. As a fellow English learner, I would like to encourage you in thinking English as something that you does not need to be perfect. For example, I just said you does not,、uh, but actually you do not is the right grammar. But you still understand the point that I'm trying to make. So as long as it's a tool for communication, the other side would not care about that much. Of a grammatical、uh, mistake, if you keep the grammatical mistake、uh, consistent, it even becomes your style,、uh, and maybe you will define the new grammar、uh, of the new century.、Uh, and so, just keep、uh, using English without worrying too much about the perfect grammar. This, I think, is very easy. Thank you for sharing. Because I myself, when I grew up in Taiwan and grew up, I found that everyone is very concerned about the agreement. Yes, the perfect nature. Yes, yes, yes. It's a very hard thing to do. Yes, yes, yes. But some YouTubers have taken down my interview recording, and they found that my article agreement is very ordinary. So often, it's very important. Yes, 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 it's very important. 
inflection， 因为我毕竟不是 native speaker， 所以就就是 article 或者是就是 singular plural 呃的 agreement， 确实就是常常出现像刚刚那个 you doesn't 的等等的状况、嗯，但是我想对方也一定都听得懂，所以我不是很 care。嗯，了解。好，那最后可不可以跟就是在台湾的学英文的朋友一些勉励或者想法的分享？嗯嗯嗯、好吧、啊，嗯，其实英语就是要多讲，然后多听。呃，我们不管是跟任何一个文化的朋友们打交道，其实他讲英语，除非他是 native speaker， 不然的话也没有必要去比。呃，像文法对不对啊，或者是说他的发音标标准啊，或者重音有没有发在字典里面标重音的那个音节上啊？因为到了最后，其实都是要听懂就好。那就像我们现在在讲话的时候，我们也不会特别去让那个腔调去让我们把重心都放在那个腔调上，而。不是在对方想要讲的话上面，那讲英文也是一样的，尤其所谓的 international English， 它本来就没有一个定论。呃，任何人他讲出来这些 accent 啊，这些口音啊，腔调等等，其实都是他个人特色的一部分嘛。如果你常常犯类似的文法错误，到最后这就变成你的 style 啊，甚至你的 freestyle。所以这样子的情况下，我还是建议大家多听多讲，然后不要那么去在意，不管是文法还是其他方面一些小错误。哇，以上是来自每天在跟全世界联络的唐风、嗯，那非常谢谢您接受我们今天的访问，也、嗯、很开心可以跟您有这么多的对谈跟对聊，也、嗯、是希望相信对大家是有很多帮助。嗯，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，拜拜。OK， 好 ，OK， 好，这这集有洋葱，你有快确定。<笑><笑>